Got you. That was great. Did they put you up? Yeah. They put okay. Me up too. Are these like programs or something, or are you just yeah. calling and they're like, yeah, come on? It's just like a very Japanese thing to do. Like if you're going to work for free, they're going to put you in a room. Yeah, okay. I don't know. At least, at least that was my experience at, at the places I've always been. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see yourself doing that for future stagiaires here? Maybe let them sleep on the couch <laughs> yes. over there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would love to do that yeah. if I could afford it. Sure. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, is this going to be a tasting menu? Yeah. Restaurant? So it's a tasting menu. Um, t- at least ten courses, maybe twelve, and we'll probably be around one fifty to one sixty when we open up for the price. One fifty, one sixty. Yeah. Got you. Yeah, I'm not really sure yet. Yeah. And are you focusing more on the cocktail side of it? Or are you going to have wine? Yeah. So we're going to have a wine pairing. Um, I'm a certified SOM, and uh, so are, is my AGM and my GM. Got you. So, so let, let's talk about that real quick. Certified okay. SOM. Yeah. Where in your career did you decide you need to be a sommelier? <laughs> Uh, it was like California. Because so. I'm not going to lie to you. I fucking hate you guys. All right? You're like, how, I'm like, how am I ever going to be that good? This guy has a palate that can taste all this wine. Yeah. But it's like, fuck. Yeah. You know? But no, more power to you, bro. You I mean, know? Yeah. That's a lot of work, man. Yeah. It's, it's like. It's a decent amount of work. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't that hard. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a natural. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, um, tell me about the, the whole process. Like, Yeah, so at California, it's like um, Charlotte ran, runs an excellent wine program. Um, and so, basically, she was always like kind of encouraging to be like, you know, you should learn more about wine. And even Val, Val has his intro level, too. And he was like, yeah, you should definitely learn more about wine. I did my intro. Like, you should get into it, too. And so, I was like, okay, like, all the tools are here. Yeah. I might as well do it. And so, I did the intro with another cook. And the intro was like, for me, it wasn't like that big a deal. I mean, there's no tasting involved. It's mostly just a written exam. Okay. Um, and then after I did the intro, I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to go for certified. Like, you know, I might as well have it on like a stamp and people be like, this guy knows, knows what he's talking about. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Now, is that certificate? How long did it take you to get that certification? So it took me like probably at least six months of like very dedicated studying while working at California. So, I heard. Um, and then it's just one test, and that's it. Tasting and written exam and done. Yeah. T- tasting, written exam, and service. Got you. Yeah, but all along the wa- all along the way, I had like a bunch of great mentors that worked at California. It's like a close friend who was the Somalia at California. He mentored me, named June. He he mentored me. Charlotte obviously mentored mm-hmm. me. Um, like a lot of friends got together, and they kind of like uh, they helped me out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what do you? Uh, what's your favorite kinds of wines? Like, what are you into? I mean, I like fucking I like, everything. Yeah, I like everything, but <laughs> I just like drinking. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, I mean, I mostly like old world wines. I like um, like white wine for the most part. I like, like you know, German Riesling. Anything German, Austrian is good. Mm-hmm. Um, anything like French is amazing. Gotcha. Yeah, mostly old world stuff. Are you gonna have uh, Japanese whiskeys here? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you're going to put full beverage service here. Full beverage service, yeah. But in the restaurant, I want to focus on wine pairings. Okay. In fact, I want to make sake like almost like a back, like a supporting character. I don't want it to be the forefront of the pairing. Okay. Like, Understood. Yeah. yeah so I maybe think. a couple courses with sake, but not... Maybe like one or two. Yeah, and yeah. And like the rest can have wine pairing. That's gotcha. Like, that's like the whole point of, of Nisei is that the concept is that it's California and American Japanese. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you work with what's around you and... I think that for the most part, you know, Western palates, they like wine. Yeah. We like, we like wine. And so you should be able to pair wine with Japanese food. With anything, really. Yeah, with with anything. Um, But I think Japanese food and pairings, they always get a bad rap because it's like, oh, it's Japanese food? Let's put fucking sake with it. Yeah. Not not there's nothing wrong with sake. I love sake. But it's just like, this is just... It's not thoughtful. Yeah, it's not thoughtful. It's like, you know, there's a whole world of wine you can use for Japanese food, too. Yeah. Yeah. So are you, uh, since you're the SOM, do you have uh, autonomy over the wine list? No, no, not at all. Or you just leave it to your general managers? Just like No, we have a discussion. Okay. Yeah, we have a discussion. Um, for the most part, they take the lead and they ask my opinion. Mm-hmm. But that's their field of expertise. But, Got you. You know, I also want to have some input and make sure that I agree with what the pairing is, yeah. for example. Yeah. Got you. Mm-hmm. Heard that. Um, and do you have a few menus already worked out, or are you sort of just 
Yeah, I mean, like, I've been doing the pop up thing for a while, so I've, I have. You like, got a few dishes under your belt. Yeah, I got some dishes. Heard I can, that. I can roll with. Um, yeah. Cool. I, yeah, the menu is like almost going to be exactly what the pop up was like. Okay. Yeah, so we mostly have ten courses. Like something that's always on the menu is like what's called ichiju sansai, and that means like one soup and three dishes. It's kind of like the base of. Uh, Japanese cuisine and base of washoku cuisine. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like what Japanese people eat for breakfast and like lunch and dinner pretty much. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um I think if I remember correctly, John Yao was telling me something similar to that in his in his Chinese background mm. where it's like one meal is three three proteins or three things and rice and like mm. that's your meal. So it's yeah. almost the same same kind of philosophy. Yeah. That's cool. Um, where are you getting your products? Like, do you yeah. go to a farmer's market in Marin? or? Yeah, yeah. So I've go, been going to farmer's markets for a long time. I try yeah. to work as locally as possible. Mm-hmm. You know, we were talking about water at a table earlier. Yeah. Like, you know, I use as much local seafood as I can. And, like, I visit tons of farms in the area. Like, a couple weeks ago, we went to K&J Orchards in Winters. Oh, California. yeah. yeah <laughs> K&J, yeah. Yeah, Booney's great. Yeah. So it's like we try to be as local as possible. Got you. Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, like, there's some Japanese products that I have to get directly from Japan. Yeah. Especially some like specialty fish yep. that I can't get here. You know, I love featuring stuff like that too. Who do you work with? True World? Um, I work with uh, Kiyoi. Uh huh. Um, he's relatively new. Okay. Um, and I work with uh, IMP, True World, and some other people. Yeah. Got you. So the, the first gentleman you mentioned, is, it, uh, is he just like a freelance fish getter? No. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he started, is he, working yeah, with? he started pretty small. Yeah. Uh, but he's based out of like, uh, he's like close to the airport. But um, basically, yeah, he has his, like his own importing business and he almost, almost exclusively imports Japanese fish and products. Heard that. Um, and the quality is really good. Yeah. yeah. But he's like relatively new. Um, but we've, I was like one of his first customers at California. And so I started that relationship. And now it's just kind of built over time, and now we're, like, pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what type of rice are you using? Uh, so I'm trying to use California Koshikari. From Far West? Uh, no. No. Um, but um, I'm trying to use California Japanese rice to gotcha. dumb it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I hear you. But yeah. where, where are you getting it? Um, I just get it from, um, basically, I get it from, like, True World. Yeah, like uh, IMP and like Japanese purveyors. Check out Far West Rice. Okay, you'll you'll love it. All right, they have a koshihi kari and they have a uh, a medium grain cow roast. Nice. All right, they I'll do check it out. they do a dry milling. Is that the Far West like Far West fungi? No, far it's called Far West Rice. Okay, okay, and it's up in Sacramento, and their thing is they don't wet mill their rice, okay. so it like basically they put it in this machine and it it cleans itself mm. within itself, so you can actually see some of the brand still on it. Cool. And uh, it's just the best tasting rice I've ever had in my life. Really? And I fucking love rice. Nice. Like, I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I a, like, I am in love with rice. Yeah. Like, I've always wanted to, like, one of my restaurant concepts is a fucking rice bar at the airport. No, oh, I love that. Where you just, yeah. like, three different types of rice, you know, one yeah. mixed, one white, one brown, and fucking whatever you want. Yeah, totally. You know? Yeah, I'll check it out. Um, what's that place in, in L.A.? Yoshinoya. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean? Like that kind of style, but at the airport, you know, yeah. it's yeah, like, you know, yeah, like style, man. it's like, that's such a great chain. I love that. I heard about that from uh, the show Barry on oh, HBO. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is Yoshinoya? And then I was in LA and I was like talking to my boy. I was like, Hey, take me to Yoshinoya. He's like, why you want to go there? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm like, just take me there, man. I don't know. Yeah. But dude. It's, it's solid. I mean, it's not it's bad. Like, it's like a pretty good yeah. beef bowl. <laughs> yeah, beef rice bowl. <laughs> what is some good uh, street food to get around here, San Francisco? Around like Russian Hill? Yeah, just around this area. Where, where are your favorite spots to eat? Just I so mean, the people out there when they're visiting. Around here, I usually I, I pop over to Chinatown if I'm looking for some good street food. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of dim sum places there. And like, I love like just, it's only like five, ten minutes away from here. Yeah, you so. really got to appreciate the, the, um, the soulfulness of the Asian food in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, like, we have it a pretty is, good here. You got it really fucking good. Yeah, like, we're like ten minutes from Japan Town, so it's like right there too. So yeah, I, I usually go there like after work. <laughs> got you, got you. Mm-hmm. Uh, has your pop up attracted uh, any Japanese chefs that are like kind of? Yeah, I seeing mean, what you're doing. Some local uh, Japanese chefs have 
eating at the pop up, and like I'm pretty friendly with a lot of them too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm starting to like a lot of people. I'm realizing like almost all my customers are Asian. They're like usually seventy five percent are Asian. Yeah, yeah, but it's great. I'm I mean, like, honestly, when I pass by an Asian restaurant and I see Asians in an Asian restaurant, <laughs> I am going in there. You yeah. know, like yeah. they, they know better than me, and they're there. So yeah. I, you know, there's some places where you go and you're like, these are all tourists. Like yeah. this, you know, it's a little. Yeah, it felt like at first it's a little nerve wracking, but then it's like kind of like validating and then after a while you know you kind of just i don't know for me I, I just kept cooking food that i felt comfortable with yeah and i people responded well to it they're like yeah i grew up with this too i'm like sick this is great <laughs> did your parents always support your cooking career or were they like what the fuck are you doing yeah. <laughs> like well, i think my father was mostly like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> <laughs> you're yeah. like i'm gonna cook dad yeah i mean he's he's a pretty traditional japanese guy so yeah yeah he was like you should get a college education like what are you doing and like he's like this is so stupid yeah <laughs> but then after a while like you started, prove it to him yeah you know? I, I kept like working like i said in high school i kept working in kitchens and i was like i'm gonna go to culinary school and like in all this stuff and he was like all right fine whatever <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um over the last couple of years they've been very supportive yeah very cool yeah okay yeah, man i'm fucking happy for you bro Thank this you. is i mean it's a it's a long time coming when a cook can finally open his own restaurant and have the support of the community and your old chefs like that's fucking magical you yeah. know and it seems like you got a pretty good fucking crew and, and everything like that so um i can't wait to come in when you open man yeah thank yeah. you so much yeah well thanks for hitting me up bro and thanks for talking with us and letting everybody know your story and yeah. um we'll do another one you know we'll catch up sure. after you've been open for a little bit and see where you're at yeah that all sounds right good yeah fuck yeah sucio talk signing off